what got you interested in joining the military in the first place? Well, I do come from a military background. My uh, my grandfather was in the army. My dad was in the Marines in Vietnam. My older brother was in the Marines uh, during Desert Storm. I actually did not have plans to follow in those footsteps, but you know, I, I graduated high school in 93. Then I started going to junior college and just working and, and stuff like that. And basically I had, a, I had a buddy of mine that was going to talk to a recruiter. And so I said, you know what, I'll go with you and see what they have to say. We actually went and talked to the Marine recruiter first. And then on the way out, because they all the services shared a, like an office space, uh, the recruiters said, well, let's just see what the army guy has to say. Turns out that he had a little more to say than the Marine guy did. So I, I chose, and my buddy also, we joined together. We chose the army path. Yeah. And my initial intention was just to serve a couple of years, get some college money out of it and be on my way. Turned, I, I decided to stick around. How was it, you said that you got to enter the army with your buddy. Did you guys get to do training together? Like So yeah, so we joined at the time and they always have different programs going on for buddies joining together. As long as you sign up for the same job and stuff like that. We both went through basic training together. And then actually I got hurt at the end of basic training. So I had to, I had to, hold off going to what's called AIT, Advanced Individual Training. Your basic training portion, which is for everybody, all soldiers, regardless of the job they're going to do in the Army, go through that same basic training. And then you have Advanced Individual Training, which is the specific job training for whatever it is that you are going to be doing in the Army. You said initially, like, we're looking to just do a few years. Right. What what kind of made that change where you're like, well, let's see about another well, year. Well, my the grand majority of my career uh, was in military police, right? But I didn't initially join as to do that job because because the original contract commitment for military police back then was a five-year sign-up. I didn't want to commit to five years in case I joined it and I hated it. I'd, I'd be stuck for five years. So I signed up for what's called a fire support specialist uh, or forward observer. That was only two years commitment because if I figured if I liked it, I could always reclass and change jobs and stuff like that, yeah. which is what I did. So I joined up as a fire support specialist, which is it's a forward observer. Basically, they're the guys that sneak forward into enemy territory, locate the enemy, plot them on a map, plot their coordinates, and call in artillery fire on the enemy location. And then you get out before you're discovered. I went to Korea. Uh, it was my first duty station after after that. And then while I was there, I became eligible to re-enlist because it was only a two-year contract, mm -hmm. right? And they do that because there was such a shortage of people that wanted to do that job. But then I, I re-enlisted to become an MP mm -hmm. and came back stateside and went through the military police school. And then what happened from your journey moving forward from there? So I went through uh, military police school and that was back when it was in Alabama still. Um, before it moved here to Fort Leonard Wood. I was one of the last classes to go through there before they shut it down there and moved it all over here. But I went through, reclassed, uh, become military police. From there, I went to Fort McPherson, which was a small little garrison in At in Atlanta. And it was a Forces Command headquarters there. So it's a very small uh, unit there. You can't get stationed there anymore. All these places, I, a lot of the places I used yeah. to be that don't even exist anymore. But it was it was a good thing because that's when I was stationed there. That was when I met Lara, who is my wife now. She was going to University of Georgia. So during the week, I'd be at Fort McPherson, which was, like I said, it was in Atlanta. And then on the weekends, I'd drive to Athens, Georgia, hang out with her, at, at, go to the college parties there and stuff like that, you know, and you know, we're still together to this day that many years later. And then from there, I went to Germany. And then uh, I brought my wife there to Germany. Uh, we were supposed to get married. We had a, all planned out, the wedding and everything or organized to be in Georgia, but I had to go to Germany first, and the plan was to come back on leave, do the wedding, and go back, but my unit told me they couldn't let me go, so basically I flew her out to Germany, and we took a weekend pass to Denmark, and got married in Denmark over a weekend pass, because it's like Vegas, they don't yeah. care. As long as you, you pay the, right, right. <laughs> you pay for it and you sign the paperwork, they'll wedge you there. So we did that, because we know, uh, you know the big wedding would have been nice, but really the desired in state was just to be married. So yeah, and then at that point, shortly after we got married, Married, I actually deployed. It was about six months after we got married. It was enough time to get her settled into Germany and stuff like that. And then my unit deployed to Baghdad, Iraq in 2003 for the initial push into, into Baghdad. And I was there for 15 months during, during that. What are some of your biggest takeaways that uh, you now incorporate into your regular life? Some things that I acknowledge and try to do, but sometimes like it's, it's easier said than done to yep. do it, right? And it's, it's a process. Uh, but we've talked before about trying to maintain good perspective on things and what is actually important and what is not. In the grand scheme of things, you know, is something going to matter or, or not? Or is something that you're getting upset about at the house, is it worth causing turmoil for 
or not. Because, for example, my son, you know, Wednesday mornings, they have late school start, right? Lara can't take him because she's gotta be at work by 7.30 on Wednesdays, so he always asks me to take him. And sometimes I'll feel like burden or an inconvenience to take him to school because that means I either have to come here very, very early or go back to the house. And it's just not, it's not convenient for right. the way my day's laid out, right? But I have to keep in mind, there were times in my life where I would have killed the event in that position to be able to take my son to school because I was in other situations or other environments. And we would talk about that. So, I mean, some of the other guys would talk about that when we were there, especially when you're about like eight months in. Just talk about the, the regular mundane day-to-day -day stuff that we would leave all our stuff and gladly walk away from it just to be back in that situation. It was for just a single a, an day to take an, my son to an school. An appreciation for the regular life stuff that, that we had been missing for so long. Anytime that something negative is coming your way, you look at it and go, is this one of the greatest things that if I was in a different circumstance right. that I would, like you said, like I would kill for an opportunity to be able to do what I'm currently frustrated with right now mm -hmm. that, and having that perspective change. Yeah changes how you feel about it. What advice would you have for someone who's considering uh, entering the military? One of the very best things I like about the military, right, is that it is all on you on whether you succeed or fail. Because when, when and, and throughout, throughout my career, I did a lot of training stuff. I, I don't know how many kids I was involved with training, but when they all arrive, it doesn't matter if you came from a lot of money or if you didn't have anything. It doesn't matter at all how, how powerful your parents were or if they were deadbeats. It doesn't matter. Everyone gets, you, all, your, all your personal stuff goes away. Everyone gets the same clothing issued. You're, the, the, you're eating at the same place. You get the exact same training. You get the exact same equipment issued, the exact same living conditions. And it's really on each individual on what they do with that situation they are put in. Whether you succeed or fail, it's all on what you do and how you respond and where you take it from there because everyone's in the same boat. And I really like that because everyone's got their different reasons as to why they join. Some some people it's for school money or just because they weren't doing anything productive or they just had to get out of that small town or they're deeply patriotic or they have family history or whatever. Right. Uh, everyone has their different reasons as to why. It, it is a genuine situation, it is, it is what you make of it. it. Whether you throw it away or you take advantage of the situation because there's tremendous opportunity for each and every person and it's available for everyone. Well, I appreciate you listening to uh, certain aspects of my story. Proud to have served for almost 24 years in the, in the Army, it was a privilege. I gave a lot, but I got even more back from that. I like to continue to serve and especially I am happy to be here in this military community because I get to work with other service members every day and help them navigate the process of home buying and selling. And we can, uh, because of our shared experience in my military background, I'm able to help them even more and just explain things, use terminology that they're using and I understand what they're going through with their jobs and their lifestyles and stuff like that. So it's, it's uh, been a good journey so far and it's just gonna continue forward.